Hi there, Rocco here. I hope you're doing well. If you've not been around before, then I'd like to welcome you to my channel. Uh, over here we do Daz tutorials and various things messing about with Daz. If you have been around before, then welcome back. Uh, well, today we're going to be taking a look at emissive lighting. Now, for those people that don't know what emissive lighting is, uh, emissive lighting is when we apply a material to a surface within our scene and then set it so that it emits light and functions as a light source within our scene. Now, we can set emissives up either with artificial means, such as putting a sphere or a rectangle in our scene and then making it emit light, like a point light or a spotlight, or we can use an emissive in a more practical and realistic fashion where we apply the material, the emissive material, to something like a light bulb or neon lights in a nightclub or a television or a phone screen. Uh, and what we're going to do in this video, we're going to look at both options. We're going to look at setting one up uh, something artificial, like place a, a sphere in a scene. And also we're going to do another little quick thing where we apply an emissive material to, you know, some elements within our scene, such as a TV screen or light bulb or something like that. So we're going to get around to do that in a moment. Uh, but first off... Uh, but again, I'd just like to say a big thank you to everybody who's subscribed to me over this last few months. Really, really do appreciate it. I'm actually closing in at the moment on a thousand subs. Uh, never in a million years that I think I'd get anywhere near that. So a big thank you to everybody who has subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button down below and the little notification bell. And let's see if we can hit that 1000 sub milestone very soon. Uh, Really appreciate it if you do that and help me out. Uh, now, as you can see on the screen, uh, we've already got a character loaded in. Uh, and as usual, I've stuck some hair on her head and she's all suited and booted and ready to be modelled, modelling for us, ready to be rendered. Uh, now, as usual, though, once again, you'll find the links to this uh, model and any other asset in the screen down in the links below. Uh, so check them out if you like something that you see. Uh, and finally, uh, as you can see up in my environment tab, uh, just up here we are set into environment mode which means the only lights that are going to be present in the scene are the ones that we place in that scene uh, and we can check that out if we just quickly pop over into nvidia iray we just get a little black silhouetted silhouetted figure because there's no lights in the scene presently so the only lights that we're going to have in the scene are or is an emissive light so if I just come back out of there, back into texture mode, and we'll put an emissive light into our scene. And the way I'm going to do that is if I come up to, just close that down, if I come up to create and come into primitive, because we're just going to use a primitive in this first example, come up to primitive, I'm going to set it to a sphere. Uh, that's way too big. And what I'll do, I'll set it to a size of uh, just one foot in diameter, just a, a little small sphere and if I hit accept you can see then we've got our sphere that's being placed at our model's feet now if I just oops I've just lifted the model there I didn't want to do that if I pick on the sphere and just move it back away from us somewhere where we can actually do something with it uh, and if I just turn around for a moment so we've got our sphere roughly where our camera is. Uh, let's bring it back a little bit further. Now, if I go back into NVIDIA iRay for a moment, we can see that everything is still black. There's just a black silhouette and a black ball up there. And the reason for that is because there's no emissive being set yet. So what we need to do is we need to come up to where the sphere is we then need to come down to services once sphere is selected and then just open up the little menus down here and come down to this section called emission. Now, as you can see there, the default is set where the emission color is at 000 or black, hence why the sphere on the screen over here is black. So what we need to do is to set the color to anything that's not black. Now, the best way to do that is we click on the, the color bar Come down to, I'll just go white to begin with. You can set any colour, but I'll just go white to begin with. And I'll click OK. And nothing happens other than our sphere. I'll tell you what, we'll just turn that camera off there because it's in the way. Uh, our sphere has done nothing but turn grey. Brilliant. The reason for that is because is we've not set the, the brightness of the sphere or anything like that. So if we come down to uh, our settings here now on the emission tab, which have now appeared after we've set 
you know, a, a value in the colour other than black. Uh, we've got the usual suspects that we see when we, we are messing about with lights. We've got the colour, obviously. We've got the temperature. Uh, Two-sided light, do we shine just in front or do we shine all around us? Uh, luminance down here. Now, the emission profile, I'm not really going to touch on that here. Uh, it's it's something, I've never used it, but it's something that is where you can model the shape of the light and set various things on it by adding a, a third-party profile. I'm not going to touch it here. It'll be a video in and of itself, that. Uh, and then, but the main thing that we're going to be looking at is luminance. Uh, we've only got the base default 1500 lumens on our sphere. So what I'm going to do is just, as I usually do, add a zero and keep adding zeros until we get some sort of light that's close to what we want and I'll just keep on going you can start to see our character our little model there just coming out of the gloom somewhat as the the ball gets lighter and lighter and our emissive gets lighter and lighter and keep coming up and we'll just go with that for now and if we flip across to our camera uh, you can see that she's close now to being lit up in a way that we would possibly want can I get another zero on there a lighter up nope that's a bit too much that uh, so what I'll do, I'll bring it down and I could do with a little bit more, so I'll just take it to 35 million, whatever that'll be. And there you go, you can see that she's lit up uh, by the sphere in our scene that's been set up to emit light. Now you might look at that and think, oh, what's the difference there between a, a spotlight and a point light? And in truth, when you set them up artificially, there's not really that much difference. Uh, you could argue and say that they're more or less the same things. And when we played around with them in the past, we're more or less setting things up in ways that they all just give off the same type of light. And after a little playing around with our emissive, both in its its luminous, its brightness and its size, uh, I've ended up with this final render of our model. And personally, I don't think it looks too bad considering it's just using one single you know, emissive uh, from our sphere that we set up. Now, it's 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 important to point out that this is an artificial emissive, something that we've created specifically to light a model in a similar way that we would use a spotlight or a point light. And in an environment like this, an artificial environment like this, like you would do in a studio shoot or something of the sort, or a promo pic that you might see on the Daz store or something, you could either use an emissive or a, a spotlight or a point light uh, and end up with a similar result. And it, it just comes down to your own personal preference and truth. But don't be afraid to experiment with emissives uh, in an artificial setting like this because, you know, with a bit of playing around and a, a little bit of imagination, you can get some decent results with them. Uh, but where an emissive comes into its own is when we use them in a practical and a real world environment where spotlights and point, light, point lights don't really cut it. Such is the scene that we can see here. Uh, we've now moved our model into a little living room, a uh, little apartment, sitting on a couch, watching TV. Now, all that we're going to do in this scene is we're just going to light the scene up with emissive lights in a natural way that it would be lit up. Uh, I do see people do scenes like this and they'll put spotlights in here and you, you get ugly shadows. If you add an artificial light to a realistic scene or a realistic setting, then it's going to look artificial. Makes sense. I mean, if you were to take a photo of yourself, uh, you know, or a friend or something, you don't have a, a three-point lighting system set up in that room. You just take a photo of them. And it's the same when, I, you know, you're going to do a realistic setting like this. You want to use realistic lights and have the lighting in a way that the lighting would exist in that realistic setting. So the only way that I'm actually going to light this scene then is using the light bulb in the lamp over here and by using the television screen. Uh, nothing else. There's going to be no spotlights. There's going to be no point lights, no HDRI map views. And we can check that if we come across over to the render tab and then have a look in our environment mode and see that we're only set at scene only. So only lights that are going to be placed in the scene and we're only going to use emissives. And again, we can check that if we just pop across to NVIDIA iRay. We just get a black empty room, no lights in the room whatsoever. It's completely devoid of light. So 
Uh, as I mentioned, there's two possible sources of light in this scene. There's a, a bulb in the lamp over here, and there is the TV screen. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the lamp first. Uh, it makes sense that any light that would come from the light would come from the light bulb, with, you know, that's, that's positioned up at the, the top there. So we only want to turn the light bulb into an emissive. Uh, and the way that we do that is by selecting the lamp, uh, and finding it in the scene tab over here and in the uh once the lamp is selected we come down to services and we come down to our lamp and then we look for light bulb and there it is as we can see and we come down to emission but it's not there now i've deliberately included this lamp because this is a, an old 3dl type of lamp uh i think it's 3dl anyway but it doesn't have an eye ray emissive surface capability so what we need to do is we need to add it to this lamp by just completely creating a new shader for it and it's simple to do what you need to do is with the the, the lamp selected and then uh, the light bulb selected we need to come up to our content tab uh, and then go into where we've all of our you know all of our characters and everything's are all and our clothing and hair are, are all sorted now we, i've got it set up here as in das tutorial so that i can easily find things but yours will probably be in your my three das 3d folder up there or the equivalent and you need to come down to share the presets give that a double click find a folder called iray give that a click come down to something called das uber and you've got in here a whole load of base shaders and the one that we're looking for is this emissive shader here uh, so with everything selected over there, we just double click the emissive and it applies the shader to the light bulb. And you can see now we've got the option to do our emissives. It's automatically uh, set it in as a white color. Now, if you have a little look down there, I'm just going to change the, the emission temperature back to base 6500 for now. Uh, and we're going to go on luminance at 5,000. We'll just go at a base to begin with. The color might not be right for what we want, but we'll just go with the base to begin with. And so now if we flip across again to NVIDIA iRay, we don't see much difference for now because our luminance is only set at 5,000. And I'm going to the same rules that we do before, just add another zero on. Still a very dim light. We'll add another zero on. We're starting to get something now, as you can see up there. And we'll add another zero into it. Uh, still a bit dim and a final zero, should we? Should that be enough now? It's getting there. Should we go one more? Should we try one more, see if we can get a, quite a bright light? So as you can see now, we use an emissive surface uh, on the light bulb. And the light bulb is now giving off light into the scene as we would expect it to be. Now, if we wanted to really light the scene up with this, we could really, you know, crank up the luminance value. But it's giving off a nice white light in the room. Uh, and it's giving us some light into the scene. It's not perfect. It's not the end result. We could crank it up even further if we really wanted. Uh, let's stick another zero on. So as you can see, we're really lighting up. But what you get here with this particular light... I'll just take the brightness down a bit. You've got a light shade on there, as you can you can just about see. If we really wanted this to be our primary light source in the scene, we could maybe set the transparency on the lampshade just to let more of the light come out from the sides and therefore lighten up the room. But for the effect that I want, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm perfectly fine with that. We've demonstrated putting the eye ray shader onto an older type uh, of material and turned it into an eye ray emissive. And we've set up a, a little bit of light, as you can see there. Now, the second source of light that's going to be in our scene is going to be coming from the TV screen. And the same thing applies, you know, we're just going to use the emission tab on the TV. So if we just click on the TV, so we get it selected up the top, uh, we come down to TV screen. And as you can see down here in emission, uh, we're all set to black, so it's not giving off any light. Uh, Incidentally, you can't really see it from this angle, but if I just pop to the perspective view for a moment, you can just make out that our model's watching The Simpsons there, which I've set as the base colour, uh, you know, just as the, the normal base colours you would set any material uh, texture. She's watching The Simpsons there. Now, that's important because we're going to use that also. So if we just pop back to our camera and we come down to the emission tab on our TV screen, we are set to zero. So what I'm going to do, as usual, I'm going to turn it up just onto white to turn on the emissive color. 
And as you can see, it's now just given off the grey light. Why? Because our luminance is down low again. So we just add a couple of zeros on. Add another one on, just keep brightening the scene up. And as you can see, our character is now starting to light up with the light from the TV. Okay. Now, if we go there, our scene is now lit up. And all we've done is we've just used these two emissives to light up the scene with natural light that can be expected to be found in the scene. No artificial lights, no spotlights, no point lights, nothing of the sort. And it gives a nice effect, just like that. Now, as I mentioned previously there about... Uh, the, the the Simpsons screen. When we've turned it into emissive, because we've turned the luminance up to, to you know to quite a high number, it's kind of washed out the light and it will continue to wash it out. But one thing that we can do is if we come up to emission colour here, we can actually pull down on the drop down and if I can find it, we can see here this is the texture that we use uh, on the TV screen, Simpsons BG. Now just watch the colour of the light when I put this in. It's gone now a bit of a pinky colour, even though we're on white there. And the reason for that is if, if we hover over the... I'll just pull this screen out a little bit just to give us a, a better view. If we hover over the tax texture now, what we're actually saying there is we're telling the emissive shader to use the colours in that image to light up the scene as the light that gets emitted. So our model is now getting lit up by a lot of the pink from the wall behind uh, where the Simpsons are sat. She's getting lit up by a bit of the blue from Marge's hair, the yellow skin, the cyan greeny coloured carpet. All of that light is now being emitted out of the TV screen. And so she's being lit up in a different colour now and a different shade of colour and it's matching what's on the TV screen. You know, if I take that off again, you can see she goes, white because we're just lighting her up now with white light if we put that texture back in she's now being lit up by the colors that are there on the screen now again a little bit of a problem you know because she's looking at the tv screen here it's all washed out and it's washed out because the luminance is really high uh, and to, if you want the, 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 the image of the, the Simpsons on there, you have to maybe do a little bit of playing around, which uh, I'm not going to do in this video. I'm going to do it in another video where uh, I show you how to do spot rendering and various things like that and then compositing things in you know, a pain package of such. But for the, for the example that we are getting, if I now just swip over to the final image that I did render after doing the spot render and such... We've ended up with a really nice scene of our model watching The Simpsons and just lit up by those two emissives in the scene. One from the television screen and one from the lamp in the corner. And that's it. No spotlights, no point lights, no HDRIs, just purely the light from the TV, predominantly the light from the TV and the lampshade and the lamp over in the corner. Now, the colouring and the lighting effect that we've got on our model there you will not be able to replicate that with point lights or spotlights unless you're putting 10, 15, you know, spotlights in the scene all focused on one area, you know, and getting them all complement, complementing each other. Basically, what is happening there with the this TV screens predominantly is it's just like a mini HDRI. Think of it like that. If you use a HDRI to light up your scene, you know, a sunny day or, or whatever it may be, the, the TV screen there is acting just like a miniature HDRI map. Uh, and it's just emitting the light from the TV screen that matches the image on the screen and lights up our character in a completely unique way, which you will not be able to replicate with spotlights and uh, point lights or any other type of lighting. Uh, so yeah, there we go. Emissive lights, the power of emissive lights that uh, when you use them correctly in a realistic and, and practical way like I've done in this scene. Uh, so yeah, I hope you found that useful, emissive lights. Uh, if you have, then please give me a like in the, the section down below and the thumbs up down below. Really appreciate it if you do and it really does help me out. Uh, likewise, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Like I said, I want to try and hit that thousand uh, subscriber milestone really soon. So it'll really help me if, if you haven't subscribed and you click that button and the little notification bell down below. Uh, and finally, if you've got any comments, whether it's about this video, about emissive lights, about any type of lighting in general, or about Daz, anything about Daz, if you've got any suggestions for videos, anything of the sorts, uh, please let me know down in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. So yeah, thanks for hanging around. I hope you found this useful and I'll see you next time. Bye bye now.